It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. On Giants.com. Here we go, here we go. And the Giants mobile app. Get them in there, let's go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. From now until training camp, we'll have a series of player interviews. We've split them up by position to kind of give you a feel of where this Giants team is heading into training camp of 2022. Just as a reminder, you can find the Giants Huddle Podcast on your favorite podcast platforms, on the Giants mobile app, and at Giants.com slash podcasts. Today, we're going to take a listen to what some of the Giants inside linebackers have to say. It's a big group with a lot of competition. Let's talk to the leader of the group. He's fighting back from injury. Where is he at? Let's find out. Here's Blake Martinez. Now we're joined by Giants linebacker Blake Martinez. Blake, how are you, man? Doing well. Just, you know, progressing every day, getting ready for uh, the season. Yeah, you talk about your progression. I mean, you look like you were walking around fine three months ago at the facility. <laughs> and I, I, do you feel like you're, like, darn close to being ready to go here? Yeah, I mean, every single day I'm checking in with the trainers, the strength staff, uh, just doing everything possible to take it day by day. And then whenever they kind of give me that green light, I'm going to be uh, ready to rock. And I'm not going to have you put a date on it because yep. we, we don't do that. But is there a shot for week one of the regular season? Yeah, I mean, as anybody knows, any of us out here, we want to be out there as soon as possible. So that's 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 my my hope. Um, but once again, I just got to listen to the trainers. Now, has it been driving you nuts that you haven't been able to been on the field and kind of – doing what you're learning in the classroom with your new defensive coordinator? Oh, 100%. It's one of those things you see everybody else kind of grow those relationships and that aspect on the field because a coach relationship doesn't happen until they see you get a play for them and see what you can learn and see how you can uh, like grow in that defense. So, yeah, it's been frustrating. What do you think about the defense? It's a lot of fun. That's where I, that's also the frustrating aspect. I want to be able to go out there and make those plays, do those things, um, be a part of that aggressive style nature that Wink has. Is this similar at all to any other defense you've ever been in? Uh, no, it is not. Yeah, it's just something I've never seen before, and it's one of those things that is unique, and I think that's why Wink's been so successful for so long. Um, and It's just going to be a, a special special situation for this year for all of us. You mentioned it's fun because of the aggression and all that stuff. Uh, get specifically, like you don't have to give away state secrets, obviously, but what are some of the things for a player like you that really can make this fun? Yeah, I think for me, I just put myself in the situation of every defense where I know every spot whether it's the corners, whether it's the safeties, whether it's the D-line, whether it's linebackers, outside backers, whatever it is. And I think in this defense, you're able to move around and be at different locations at all times, and nobody really knows where it's coming, where, where we're coming next. Now, you're a good blitzer. I imagine oh, that's yeah. part of it that kind of gets you excited too, right? Oh, 100%. It's one of my things I've always kind of – I love anticipating, love like understanding snap counts, all those types of things, and be able to get and beat guys one-on-one. Now, I, I haven't seen this specific drill before. I know you're not on the field because of the injury, but they set up the five garbage cans, and yep. it looks like, from my perspective, it looks like chaos. Obviously, oh, you yeah. guys know exactly what you're doing, but is that part of what makes this defense work, making sure everyone is in the exact right gap and timed up properly depending on what the call is? Oh, yeah, 100%. I think this is one of the most fundamentally sound type of defenses where you have to know exactly where to be, what position, where to be in the gap, where to be at the start of the snap, post-snap, pre-snap, all that stuff, and it's it's exciting. Now, I, the last couple of years, you guys have been big on disguise, but yep. it's mostly disguise in the back half yep. of the defense, right? Just watching what you're doing, is there a lot more disguise in the front seven of the defense in this system? No, 100%. I think there's a lot of things that go into each play, um, and I think every single one you have to understand what we're trying to get out of it, where the weakness is, where the strength is, so you can be able to disguise, like you said, uh, every single chance we get. And obviously the goal is to get free runners, right? You oh, want to confuse yeah. the offense and get free runners. But even if you don't get free runners, with the number of guys you're sending, you mentioned it before, that's going to open up some one-on-one opportunities and some matchups that should be favorable to, to quicker guys like you against maybe some bigger guys that don't move as well. Oh, 100%. And I think that's the best part about the whole situation. Every single time we're doing something, there's a key person, key m point of emphasis on that play to, to set something free, like you said, free runners, or have other aspects where one guy's going against a guy that we think we're better than. Now, the other side of that, if you're pressuring a lot, that means there's going to be a lot of, all right, you go cover that guy, and you're probably not going to have a lot of help. Exactly. Has, has that been a big change for you guys, too, understanding how the coverage part of this is going to be different than what you've done in past years? No, 100%. I think that's the aspect where you have to understand the front end, how it affects the back end, the back end fronts the front end. And I think it it is one of those things like, ooh, I'm going to be by myself, but also the ball's going to have to get out way quicker. So there's a lot less sure. route concepts that are available for those for those teams at that point. 
And I imagine then your fundamentals, right? Having your right leverage, understanding formation, what a guy might do. That becomes even more important in this type of defense, right? Where everything's happening so fast. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think you have to be on the your P's and Q's at all moments because if you slip up one time, you give that, that quick route availability, they're going to they're gonna hit us. I know you're not in the meeting room with them. You're in different position groups. What has it been like working with Kayvon Thibodeau since oh, he's been I here? I mean, that's one of the things I kind of held back a little bit because it was like, all right, he's a – fifth overall pick you don't know how he's going to be prima donna whatever it is but ever since he's came in here he's been working hard head down knows what he's supposed to do all the walkthroughs that i've been a part of um he knows what he's doing asking questions if he doesn't and it's it's super special to see yeah we all heard that noise right oh he came in he's you know kind of full of himself and all exactly. that stuff and, and look nobody knows anything about anyone until you're in the building and in the room with them, right 100%. so for you all bunk oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, all bunk <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a great kid, and I'm just excited to see him work, and especially once we put the pads on, you, you get to see a full football player at that point. Now, I know you haven't seen the pads, but do you see the special athleticism from him? You know, you've been around some really good edge rushers. Oh, yeah. Does he have everything you want out of that kind of group? Oh, 100%. I think that's the, the biggest thing that you see and watching him through fundamental work, whether it's individual, walk through, 7-on-7, seven 11-on-11 seven, 11 11 team reps, it's, it's special to see. As you final question, as you look at this defense and your personnel in it, because that's always key, right? Getting the people to oh, fit yeah. in the scheme. What are some of the things specifically that you are really excited for to see? Oh, man, imagine this guy doing this, this guy doing that. That kind of is like, boy, this could be really dangerous for opposing offenses. No, 100%. I think there's a, there's a list goes on and on. I mean, Adoree Jackson going out there being a, a cover one corner. Um, you see Xavier McKinney making huge strides at the safety position. Um, Tay Crowder making huge strides at the linebacker position. Obviously, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, like Kayvon, Aziz, Ellerson. I think Ellerson is probably the one that I, I would say for people to look out for. Um, he's an explosive. He's probably one of the most explosive guys on the team. Um, and just seeing him flourish and get that confidence, it's going to be a, a special moment for him. Let me ask you about Ellerson because you you look at him and he like checks every single box you're exactly. looking for right so what have you seen from him that that really has you excited about him yeah I think it's just his confidence uh, it, over this last 10 weeks that we've been here in OTA is just seeing him grow within himself because I think he thinks he's smaller than what he is <laughs> and so it's one of those moments when he he's had those little kind of snippets and s shining moments during OTAs that you're like okay yeah this guy once he gets that consistently that's it's game over and I should ask you about this too, right? You've been in this league for a long time. You've seen every offense that they can throw at you. Oh, yeah. So you've been looking at the Giants offense now oh, in practice, 100%, 100%. right? 100%. Without giving away any secrets, give me a feel. How much fun is it going to be watching this offense oh, on the field this year? So much fun, especially once they dial it all in. The things that I'm watching, I'm just like, wait, where'd that guy come? Where'd that guy, where'd that, what, what's going on here? Like, pre snap movement's out oh of control, my gosh, right? It's crazy. <laughs> and so it's just one of those things that it makes me excited to get out there and go against it. And also, once again, gets me excited to see, like, all the guys that are going to be able to flourish within it. Blake, great seeing you, awesome. man. Awesome. No, and we hope to see you, you back so on the field soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now we're joined by Giants linebacker Carter Coughlin. Carter, good to see you, man. How are you? Yeah, good to see you. Good to be here. All right. Just knowing how you played in college and seeing you your first year here, this Wing Martindale scheme seems perfect for your skill set. Fair? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, Coach Martindale loves to – Blitzes linebackers, loves to get after the quarterback, and you know, coming from that outside linebacker pass rushing background, uh, it's 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 been a lot of fun to learn so far. Now I know you're in the inside linebacker meeting room too, right? So are you now basically taking all those edge rusher skills from college, and now you get to apply them as an inside rusher here in this scheme? Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, it's been even more fun to be able to blitz from depth. You know, coming off the edge, the they always know where you're coming right. from, but coming out coming from depth, you get a, a running head start and you get to go attack all different types of gaps so it's awesome well and you also instead of attacking six six 320 pound offensive tackles that work past pro all year attacking guards and centers a little bit of a different story right? oh such a different story yeah and that's and that's where just being able to move all that kind of stuff come, really comes in handy now what has it been like trying to learn the scheme is it is it we talk to the offensive guys they talk about how thick the playbook is what's the process like learning wink scheme yeah you know a, a lot of it is um it really comes down to just understanding the concepts because it's a lot of different guys doing a lot of different things, which makes it hard for offenses to pick up because you can't just you know hone in on one guy and it's like okay, well he's going to be the designated you know this that whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's a bunch of different guys doing a bunch of different things. So as long as you understand the overall concept of the defense, you're able to 
um, really play any spot. So it's almost conceptual, and you just have to know based on your role in that play what you have to Absolutely. do. Absolutely, yeah. And that there's the drill that I haven't seen before, but you guys work every practice. You have the four stations with the five garbage yeah. cans, which represent the five offensive linemen. I'll try to explain this right. And basically the front seven lines up. I think you guys have safeties in that mix too. And you always have to be standing up in the right gap. For a guy like me who don't know the play, it looks like chaos. But – for guys like you, can you explain why that drill is so important for getting your formations and your timing right to make this defense work? Yeah, absolutely. So each station, they kind of have a different focus uh, from you know the playbook, I guess you could say, different plays that they're calling. And um, and so the big thing is being able to nail the the communication and get everybody aligned in the right spot and have everybody you know go to the gaps they need to hit, run whatever blitz path we have. Um, and so it really just forces that rapid fire communication. As soon as they make the play call, you got to start making the checks, get everybody lined up. So, you know, for me, uh, really, you know, being a newer inside linebacker, it's really good practice for me to, you know, make those kind of checks, make those calls, really test myself to see how quickly I can get everybody lined up. What have been the major challenges for you converting to that inside linebacker? Style? You know, I, I think it really just comes down to when you're the inside linebacker, you're the one that needs to make the checks. You need to make the calls. You need to make sure everybody's aligned, everybody's on the same page. Whereas, you know, being the, the outside linebacker, uh, you know, defensive end, hybrid, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, edge, yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, it. It was more so receiving the call and then thinking through, okay, what do I need to do? And occasionally making a check. But now it's like I need to make those checks, hear the play call, while I'm also thinking, you know, what am I doing in this play? So that's it, – it's different. Um, do you like it? I love it. Yeah, I love it. And it, it, it takes a little more uh, – Yeah, it, it, it honestly has just changed the way that I've had to prepare – for the scheme, um, for the position, all that kind of stuff. But I've been loving it so far. There's probably some more coverage stuff for you then too, right? Like you might get lined up in a tight end. You get those running backs, those that really quick guys on those option routes, those those little circle routes in the middle of the field. What has that adjustment been like for you? Yeah, the coverage has definitely been different. Um, you know, just working in that, all the, like the man concepts, having to man a tight end, running back. And um, I imagine in this scheme, there's a lot of that, having the man guys that. up, right? Yeah, and, and even in the zone stuff, a lot of it's match zone, so it's tight matches. Um, you know, and and leading up to this, I, most of my stuff had been kind of spot dropping zone coverage, and so um, so that's taken an adjustment too. But I mean, it's it's just like anything, you know. Things are going to change. You gotta you gotta work your butt off to make the most of it. And I feel like my skill set has been uh, aligning well with with what we've been putting in. I mean, that's working all different types of skill set, right? You might have to backpedal a little bit. You got to flip your hips a little bit differently. I, that, that, I mean, that's probably a whole lot of stuff you just haven't been asked to do a lot before, right? Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the day, it just takes work. That's my mentality. Is if I'm lacking in any area I'm going to work my tail off especially going into this little you know six week period where we're off um, going to hone in on some of the stuff that I feel like I need to work on and get it all figured out well to that point what were your major goals this offseason where Carter Coughlin wanted to become a better player I really think it like just the the linebacker skill set honing in on that because you know last year was my first year having done that um, and it and you know it went well but then I got hurt and so really just this offseason really focusing in on 100% stand up inside linebacker Uh, and so you know all the coverage stuff that we talked about um, you know run gaps fits all that kind of stuff and that's going to be my focus when I get home have a lot of field work set up with a a trainer that I work with out in Minnesota and I'm going to have bodies out there to work on coverage all that kind of stuff. We look forward to seeing you in the July Carter. Thanks a lot. Absolutely yeah thanks for having me. Carter Coughlin Giants linebacker. Giant season tickets are on sale now for the 2022 season. In addition to ticket savings, membership benefits include access to exclusive events, experiences, pre-sales, and more. You can lock in your seats starting at just 100 bucks. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash tickets for more information. Now we're joined by Giants linebacker, Tay Crowder. Tay, good to be with you, man. What has it been like learning a new defense for the first time? Or it's for been, the second time in three years, really? Yeah, it's been good. You know, it's uh, always good to come in from and start from square one. You know, it's very competitive, and it gives you something to come look forward to every day. What are the challenges this defense puts on an inside linebacker making the calls and doing all that stuff pre-snap you have to do. You just got to learn you got to learn everything. You got to learn different parts of the defense on what uh, everyone else is doing. It's fun, you know, it's fun the different parts of the defense. Uh, it's almost like an offense cuz there's so much you can do with the defense, so it's fun. That's Leonard Williams in the background, by the way, folks. If you could hear Leo yelling, he's quite vociferous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> watching practice, it looks like to us, be not being in the room, obviously, organized chaos. 
obviously it's not that. So how much organization do you have to do and help with when all those guys are just standing up and at the line of scrimmage, maybe one guy in his hand in the dirt, seven guys are standing, some are coming, some are going. How much do you have a role in organizing all of that? I feel like um, we have a big role of it because we got to set, you know, set the front and uh, you got to know where everyone else is and you got to also know where you where you got to be at on the defense. So. It's pretty cool once you uh, figure out and learn what you got to do. It's, it's a fun defense to be able to play on. How much are you guys really dictating when you make that play call, we're doing this, we're going to make the offense adjust to us? And how much is it, all right, we're going to call this, but if the offense throws, you know, sets the, both their tight ends split out wide or something like that, then we have to make an adjustment. Or are you really trying to be the initiator and force the offense to adjust to you? Uh, I think that's what we're doing, trying to force the offense to adjust to us. You know, we're we're basically just having fun and doing what we do. And the offense has to learn and, uh, you know, look at what we're doing to figure out what we're doing. How much of this can be practiced in the spring where there's not a lot of pads? And, and how much more important does it become to start doing more of this when you get to the summer and you can actually do real football type stuff? One more time. How tough is it to practice this stuff in the spring when there's no pads in contact? And, and how much more can you do when you get to the summer and you can actually put the pads on and, and do real football stuff? I think this just comes with being a pro, you know. Coach uh, hones in on that all the time, just being a pro. And uh, you just got to come in, you know, fly around and do what you do and make sure you practice the right way. Yeah, I got to imagine, you know, for the linebacker position especially, you know, what do you guys accomplish for the most part in the spring that you try to carry over to the summer so you can kind of hit the ground with your feet running? Uh, definitely the techniques and fundamentals. You know, we got to uh, hone in on that. You know, coming from home and coming from wherever you're training, that you got to get back into, you know, football shape and, uh, you know, just getting back into the ground and doing what you usually do. Besides learning in the defense, what were some of the things that you really focused on this offseason of parts of the game you were trying to improve? Parts of my game where I've been trying to improve is just uh, my conditioning and, um, you know, just learning. You know, I just always want to come in every day and learn from every guy in my room and, and just learn from uh, my mistakes and just try to uh, get better and, and working on consistent consistency. You talked about, final question, you talked about the mental stuff, getting people lined up. How about the actual on-field football part of this? How do you see your skill set fitting in to what Wink and, and his scheme wants you to do? Um, I see myself, you know, helping the team out a lot. You know, I just want to – that's my main focus is to be able to go out and help the team the most I can, whether it's on defense or special teams or wherever they need me. You looking forward to getting that to the quarterback maybe a little bit more, some more blitzing? No doubt. Ready for that. There's that smile. That's yeah, what I want to yeah, see. Yeah. Does, does that get you excited and get a good chance to get a little downhill a little bit more, get in yeah, the backfield yeah, some more? Yeah, very, because, I mean, I feel like playing linebacker, that's, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to play aggressive and uh, get downhill and make plays. Do you see those opportunities based on what you've done so far in the spring? No doubt, for sure. We well, can't wait to see it. Take yes, good sir. stuff, my man. Appreciate you. Now we're joined by Giants – Rookie linebacker Darian Beavers. Darian, how are you, man? I'm amazing, man. Blessed to be here. So the way I've heard people explain rookies getting thrown in the deep end of the pool like that is trying to drink out of a fire hose. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been trying to drink out of a fire hose the last few weeks? I'll say to an extent. Uh, it's been it's been a lot of uh, learning, a lot of just a lot of reps out there, just trying to um, catch up to the veterans because they've been here for I guess five six weeks. Sure. So just trying to catch up to them, try to. Make sure you can hold your own when you're out there and not mess up as much as possible. So it's a lot of studying um, when we go home to the hotel after. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but, I mean, this is what we ask for. How similar or dissimilar is what they're asking you to do here compared to what you're doing at Cincy? I mean, it's, it's, it's about the same. The only thing that's harder is, like I say, I'm learning a new scheme. Um, I'm learning a whole new defense, and that's the, that's, I think that's the biggest part, just all these little adjustments that you have to make. Um, at Cincinnati, my last year, like I had that, I knew that defense like the back of my hand. So sure. it was something like, I just felt very comfortable going in there and, um, and performing and knowing the plays. Like I said, here it's like you're learning a whole new playbook. So you got to make sure you're on your A game, and that's something that we, me and uh, Michael McFadden, who's my roommate at the hotel, we take that uh, seriously. So we, if it, that's sitting that butt night trying to go over like testing each other on the plays, that's that's, that's what we got to do. Now my sense though for linebackers, this is a pretty fun scheme to be in, right? Because yes, you got to have a yes. chance to get in the backfield and make some plays. Yes. It, it's it's really it's really fun uh, to be coached by Wink and coached by uh, Eggs, what we call him, uh, my linebacker coach. So I mean, we have a lot of blitzes in this in this scheme, a lot of opportunity to make plays. 
what's been the biggest challenge for you kind of getting used to NFL life versus college life? Like I said, probably just for me is, uh, I mean, it's football out there, man. You, mm-hmm. you, I've been playing football since, since I was six or seven years old. So the football aspect is, I mean, obviously it's stepping up a notch, but that's just you playing football. I would say the recovery part and, um, like I said, learning a new playbook. Learn, making sure that when you're out there with the ones, you can perform at your best and making sure that they can earn your trust. And I feel like that's something that you have to do as a rookie is to earn a lot of people's trust. So that's like been one of my big goals is, like I said, just studying the playbook, making sure that I'm locked in when I'm out there um, and making sure that I can perform at the best of, the, best of my ability. Well, you know, we do a lot of draft work on our podcast, getting yes. ready for the draft. So I, I watched a lot at Cincinnati, and I could not believe how many names got pulled before yours mm-hmm. did on draft day, by the way. Do you have a little chip on your shoulder? Because, I mean, I, because I'm sure you think you went a little bit later than you should have based on how you played at Cincinnati. Because, I, frankly, I think so, to be honest with you. I would say um, I'm just blessed to be be blessed to be here anyways. I mean, it doesn't matter where I went. Um, we're all have a clean slate right now. Sure. We're all uh-huh. rookies. We all come in at this clean slate, and we all have to prove ourselves. So I feel like for me, it's I'll have a chip on my shoulder no matter what. And um, I just want to come in here, work. Uh, there's a bunch of competition within the room, and I just want to be the best version of myself for this team. So that's that's all. That's my goal this this next year is to perform and be at my best. And it's, you know, watching you at Cincinnati, I, you know, you just reminded me, reminded me of like a throwback linebacker. Mm-hmm. You're a guy that you can do the dirty work in the line of scrimmage. You're big enough to man up the tight end on the outside. Yep. Did you take pride in, in doing a lot of that, you know, hard-nosed linebacker, old-school work? That, that's something that Luke Fickle, like, bred in us. I mean, <laughs> from Luke Fickle and Brady Collins, our uh, strength staff, like, we, that's our motto, basically, is uh, we, we're tough and nasty and, and that's something that's how we handle ourselves. So on the field, when an old lineman that's maybe 100 pounds bigger than me, like, it doesn't matter. It's all about the heart. And that's something that he, they bred in us. So it doesn't matter. That, that physicality is just something that, um, something that is just, it's just my nature. What do you think your greatest strengths are as a linebacker in addition to that physicality stuff I'll you're talking about? i probably say my intelligence. I think that's something that, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say underrated, but something that, People don't take in an aspect about me because I feel like my intelligence is something that's really crazy that I can pick up on things well. I can learn a new playbook well. I can I mean, so certain stuff like that I feel like is something that I'm really, really, I guess, confident about myself. Well, what do you plan to do now? We're, we're about done with the off-season program now. You're going to have about six weeks. You'll mm-hmm. come back for training camp. What mm-hmm. are you going to try to do over these next six weeks so that you can – hit the ground with your, you know, running when you yeah, get here back I mean, in the end of July. Same thing that we're doing here, basically, but with, with, just with not the coaches. Um, I'm going to have a group, group of guys at home that are going to come nice. out. And I'm just going to do, like I said, I'm going to go over the playbook. I'm going to give them the playbook. They're going to give me a call, and i got to make sure I know all the checks and adjustments. And obviously work out, stay in shape. And, I mean, that's something that's big. You take care of your body. I think that's one of the biggest things is just your intelligence and your body. I mean, those are the two biggest things are out here. So if I just – do handle that I'll be fine when I come here six weeks from now now finally you know your best way on the field as a rookie is doing what special teams where you at in terms of getting ready to play all those different units I'm ready I'm ready <laughs> I mean hopefully the coaches know I'm ready I'm I'm ready to start every special teams and that's something like I said that's something that I gotta prove myself like I gotta prove myself that I'm capable of starting every special teams and that's something obviously that I pride myself on and like I said I want to be the best version of myself so that's me starting every special teams and Work my way up. Now I'm trying to think back. You did a ton of special teams in college, right? Yes, yeah, I did. I all, did. all four years, or or or, so, or or at the end where you pulled off a little bit. I mean, yeah, towards the end we pulled off a little bit, but obviously my my first three years I, I played every special teams. So, so I, have, I have a lot of experience in that. So you feel pretty confident coming yeah. in that you're going to be able to affect that pretty well. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I got to like I said, I got to work my I got to work my butt off, um, and like I said, just try to be the best ver- best version of myself. Well, we can't wait to see it, Darian. Best of luck. We'll see you in the July, right, man? Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Don't miss your chance to experience a premier hospitality experience watching Giants games and world-class concerts in 2022 as a Giants suite partner. Limited full-season locations are available or place a deposit for individual games. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash suites for more information. And now we are joined by one of the Giant rookie linebackers, Micah McFadden. Micah, how are you, man? Doing great. Doing great. Glad I'm here. All right. Uh, You know, it's funny. The Giants drafted you, and then... I looked at all your college tape, and I'm like, wow, did they just, like, find the guy that perfectly fits into Wink Martindale's <laughs> blitzing linebacker system? Like, did you just come in and look at what they want you to do, and you're like, oh, wow, this is this looks great to me. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, definitely just, you know, learning the first couple of installs, I knew how aggressive this defense is and um, the way we're going to try to get after the quarterback in a bunch of different, 
you know, a bunch of different schemes and fits. So really excited to be a part. For the fans that don't know, you were one of the best blitzing linebackers in college football last year. What makes you, I mean, what makes a linebacker a good blitzing linebacker? Yeah, you know, I think for me, I just was able to have a lot of experience in it and they used me in that way a lot. So obviously I just got, um, you know, I just adapted to, to doing that more often. And um, But I think there's also a skill to it and there's, you know, there, there has to be a little bit of unselfishness and working with the defensive line and working pick games and, and be, being able to know who's, who's the guy who's supposed to come free and make the play. So um, there's a lot of different aspects to it, but, you know, I love doing that stuff. And when you get one-on-one with the center or guard, mm-hmm. where they're obviously probably sometimes have 70 pounds on you, 60 pounds on you, but you have the quickness advantage, right? So mm-hmm. what's your mindset when you run one of those games and you get that head-on-head, one-on-one matchup with a bigger center or guard? How are you trying to beat them? Yeah, I mean, you just said it. You know, you're not going to – not often are you going to overpower somebody who, you know, has that weight advantage on you. So I think, you know, most of the time you're going to have to use your skill and your, you know, your, your quick speed to be able to move around and – um, you know, either using leverage against them and uh, just kind of finding the open space within the offensive line and attacking, t- attacking the weakness. How similar are some of the blitzes and schemes they're using here to what you guys did do at Indiana? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of them are similar and, um, you know, have similar ideas to them, um, whether, you know, they're simulated or not. But um, I think there's also, you know, there's there's some things where it's it's definitely NFL schemes and that's that's where kind of you know, the knowledge aspect of it and just learning the defense comes into play. So what has it been like learning this and, and trying to figure it all out? We were just talking to, to Darian, your, your roommate, and I, I said to him, people have explained to me rookies getting thrown into this, trying to drink out of a fire hose. Is, is that kind of what it feels like to you? Uh, that's exactly what it is. And especially, you know, the first week or week and a half or so, it's just, you know, a lot of learning and just trying to, you know, get out on the field and um, figure it out by yourself. And, you know, you're obviously in the meeting rooms with the coach and everything, but it's obviously difficult just to, get on the field and, and have it go full speed rather than just looking up on a board and watching, you know, how something's supposed to play out. But, um, you know, it's going well. And at this point, you know, we've we've put in a lot of the defense and it's just about getting better and perfecting it every day. I know he's still rehabbing, so he hasn't been out on the field with you, but how helpful has Blake Martinez been in trying to get you ready for this? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, Blake's a bright guy and, he, you know, he's – Obviously, he can't practice with us right now, but he's doing a great job just helping, you know, especially the rookies, but everybody who's learning the defense and kind of just installing it with us and, uh, you know, just just asking us questions throughout the day and keeping us on our toes about uh, new things in the defense and things we got to be looking out for. So he's been a great help, I think, for the entire room. How much of the Mike linebacker stuff have you been doing? You've been doing some of the with, with the third team, calling out the plays and adjustments and stuff like that, or, or um, not so much? They've been running me a lot at will, actually, right now. Okay. But, um, you know, I've... I think for everybody in the room, it's important to know both positions and just try to, you know, not only know your position, but know the overall scheme of the defense and, and what we're trying to do as, as a whole. So, um, you know, however they want to use me and, and when they when I learn the entire defense um, as a whole, I think, you know, they'll be able to use me in multiple ways. So what's your plan now for the next six weeks so you make sure when you get back here for training camp you're rocking and rolling and ready to go? Yeah, so I plan on going home, um, but, you know, me and Dane will be down there and we're going to train together and, and get after it. Uh, I know for, for at least a couple of weeks while we're down there, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to train a lot, get back with my, my guys down there and get, and get come back, you know, full speed and ready to work. Now, both of you guys, I know, are Florida guys. Did you guys know each other before you went off to college? Did you guys play against each other or? Dane was a year behind me, but we okay. definitely knew of each other. And, you know, we had guys who were in the, you know, in, in each other's friend groups and whatnot. So, um, definitely knew of each other, and then you know once we once we met up here, and we actually flew up together, oh, nice. you know, for for a rookie mini camp. But yeah, you know that's my guy. Awesome. Well, you know Florida, that's where all the yeah. football players come out of these days. That's right. Like a good that's stuff, right. my man. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank, thank you. you. Great conversations. We thank the guys for joining us on this episode of the Giant Subtle Podcast. I'm John Schmuck. Remember to stay tuned, folks. Make sure you go back into the archive, find all the episodes. It's really good insight from all these players. They give you a really good feel for what this Giants offensive and defensive systems are going to be and where the team is heading into training camp. I'm John Schmuck. Stay tuned to the Giant Subtle Podcast. We'll see you next time.